what we're really excited about is there's a couple of features, but the one that is most connected to what you're saying mm -hmm. is this ability to, to invest in the habit formation of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Because I think emotional intelligence crosses boundaries that no other um, mental competency or social emotional competency does. It impacts your own performance. It impacts, you know, the, the performance you have with, within teams and groups. It impacts every single step of any single goal that you're, you know, trying to go after. Mm -hmm. So we really honed in on this emotional intelligence um, process. And, you know, we've tried to build a system that allows teams and like, whether it be work teams, sport teams, mm -hmm. to really monitor and track and learn from the like constellation of emotions that are constantly at play in, in that system. Every emotion has an impact on, on results and on behavior. So if you just start right there, it's like, well, geez, we better find out more about what we're all feeling right now. <laughs> and yeah. then find out more about what, you know, that feeling uh, results in from a behavioral standpoint and, and how we can all kind of cope with that better. So I know I'm just kind of like going in a million directions, but. No, but I like that a lot. I know we've had some interesting discussions and as well, um, you've talked with our team uh, about that emotional di dynamic and kind of um, that key in performance where or the ability to be able to separate our emotion from how did you from our attention? Mm. So often, I, I find this dynamic. I think about it quite often, like how the two are so intertwined, but off. but when we're able to arrive at that point where we're kind of able to to tease it out and see, like, okay, I have both of these things simultaneously, but there is one thing that I really need to focus my attention on this emotion is here, I'm not ignoring it, but I, maybe it isn't serving me to, or it's distracting me from a, paying attention to what I need to pay attention to. Mm. Can you delve into that a little bit? Because mm -hmm. the way you're doing this is, is great, and I think it's <laughs> very useful for both athletes, um, normal people, business people, because we are constantly dealing with these emotions, and there's constantly things we need to pay attention to or to be yeah. focused on. And I think that's a really useful skill to be able to have. Yeah, it's it's such an interesting relationship, like trying to tease out the differences between the thinking brain, the emotional brain, and and the 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 back and forth seesaw relationship between them. And you know, like it it boils down to attention is the currency of performance. We know it's true to a large extent. Because it, we can think about examples where a, there was a Canadian figure skater a long time ago. Oh my gosh, uh, she's French. Um, jo, I'm so bad with figure except for Elvis Stoico. But that's oh, like, <laughs> classic. <cool. laughs> anyway, long story short, um, this was a pretty uh, epic tale of of resilience and attentional control because it was way back in an Olympics three or four cycles ago and, and her, one of her, um, her parents, I think her, her mother had passed away 24 hours before her gold medal skate. And so she goes out and she has one of the objectively best performances um, of her life, of her career in an emotional state that in traditional you know, senses would not be considered the ideal performance state, mm -hmm. which was a very common phrase for a pretty long time. Let's find that ideal performance state. With all the knowledge we have now, it make that makes no sense, right? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist and emotions aren't a menu. You can't be like, you know what? For this performance, I'm gonna feel boom, boom, boom. You know, your emotions are, are just typically and generally, you know, far ahead of you, and they have been for our whole existence because it's the most complex and innate system we have. What's really important to, to notice about this is when you feel certain ways, it makes it harder to pay attention in certain ways. When you feel other ways, it makes it easier to pay attention in other ways, right? 
all of a sudden you're naturally just more attuned to certain things. So if we just function under the premise that we don't have full control over how we feel, right? Like we can lock that in. You have influence, but you don't have full control. You have to then find a way to separate how you're feeling from, from what you're paying attention to. If I go back to the figure skating example, you can feel, you know, in a state, you can be in a state of grief, you can be in a state of discomfort, you can be in a state of all kinds of what would be negative states traditionally, and still focus on the right thing. It's totally possible. So, you know, for a long time, I've kind of just uh, used this phrase, like find your focus through the feelings as an emotional, it's an emotional acceptance approach to go, look, feelings are going to swirl a little bit, but you can always kind of take your eyes and your gaze and look at the right thing and tell yourself the right thing about that situation, despite the fact that your emotions might have served up something that, you know, is less than ideal, <laughs> we would say. Exactly, exactly. And I think so many athletes and I think general, people in general realize that most of the time we're coming to performances or situations where we need to be focused and we're not in an ideal mm. state. And we are, are always trying to replicate, especially as athletes, you know, like a lot of people have kind of their routine or their little superstitions, but we try to replicate that state. And I think this is, this is helpful in many ways, um, but you can never exactly replicate it so that you have the same emotions, the same energy level, like there's way too many variable, variables. So it's so much more useful to be able to have this ability to, to separate Mm. the attention from the emotion as opposed to trying to control your entire world which is like mm. completely useless <laughs>